Hi, you're with Chandeep at Goodly once again. And in this video, I'm going to talk about that. How do you take a sum of the visible values in a table or a matrix visualization in Power BI? Now, this is not as intuitive as it sounds. Let's just take a look at how this is done. Let's start. All right, I'm in Power BI, and that's where I have loaded a very simple data set, just a standard sales table linked with my calendar or a date table, and a very simple visual right here, which is where I have the year, and I have the quarter, and against that, I'm trying to do a few calculations just to help you understand what does it mean by summing visible values. So let's just drag one of the calculations, which is nothing but order quantity, right into our pivot table, and let's just take a look at the result. Now, whenever you're dealing with a simple calculation, maybe a sum or a count, you will always, almost always, have the, the individual rows, which is the row for quarter one, quarter two, quarter three, and quarter four, total up to what you see as a grand total. Take a look. Quarter 3, 4, 48, plus 5, 65, we definitely get 1013 as a total. Most likely, this is going to be the scenario whenever you're doing some standard sum count calculations. The individual rows will do match up as the total value. Now, this is not going to be the case whenever you're doing slightly different calculations like a distinct count. Take a look, I have built another calculation, which is the count of the unique products that were sold. And if I take a look at that calculation, it's very straightforward. All that I'm doing is I'm just finding out that how many unique products were sold. So distinct count of the product key column of the sales table. If I drag that calculation to my pivot table, the results are going to be something different. So let's just take a look. There were 25 products sold in quarter three, 25 in quarter four, but the totals do not match up because overall also there are just 25 unique products. 25 here, 25 here, 31 here, 31 here. That is not what the total is, about 112. This is not what the total is. Overall, there are 56 unique products. Now the need here, if that is your need, that's fine. But there could be sometimes a different need, which is where you'd like to sum the values that are visible to you inside of the pivot or a matrix. And then that's what the sum should appear, not the entire calculation that you have written. So as a total, I don't really want the, the model to calculate the unique count right here at the total level, whereas I want the model to actually fetch these two values and sum them up at the total level. Let's just see if you had this type of a need, which is where you want to sum the visible values of the table, how can this be done? All right, let's just proceed to work with Tax Studio because I need to be able to create a few queries. Queries are nothing but tables to be able to solve this problem. Let me first help you build the logic as to what am I going to do, and then hopefully you'll understand once I kind of proceed on writing the tax code. Take a look. At the total level here, I do not really want the DAX to kind of give me a distinct count of the entire year of 2001. Whereas I want the DAX to remember these two values, which is 25 and 25, which is nothing but quarter three and quarter four values. And that's what I would like to sum it right here. Here again, at the total level, I don't really want the DAX to find the unique count of the entire year of 2012. Whereas I want some, some calculation that actually remembers Quarter one was 25, quarter two was 25, 31 and 31, and then takes a sum of all of these visible values in the pivot table right here. So how do we actually build this type of a calculation? Let's just take a look. What I'm actually going to do is in the DAX Studio right here, I'm going to start writing a query. And in the query, I will try to produce this particular pivot table right here in the form of a table. Now, once I create that particular table, I can then fetch these values of the table and sum, sum them up at the total level. Let's just start and let's just take a look at how this is done. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start writing with the evaluate right here. So and that's how you write a query. So evaluate. And I'm going to say that I'd like to summarize my sales table. So sales table right here. And I'm going to say that uh, there are two columns that I would want. The first column is going to be the year and the second column is going to be the quarter. That's how I want the sales to be summarized. I'm going to pick up the uh, year from the calendar year column and then pick up the calendar year again and this time it's going to be the quarter column right so this is how i'd like to create a small summary table which is where the first column is year the second column is the quarter we are not yet doing the unique products as of now let's just take a look at what output do we get so i'm just going to quickly format this dax and just come to the home and run this and take a look at what do we get so here at the bottom you can see that we definitely have received a year one uh, and quarter three and four, year two and quarter one through two, three, four. All right, good to go. Now we have received the first two columns. Let's just also try to create the next column, which is the count of the unique products. Let's just start to wrap this particular summarize table in an add columns table because I'm trying to create a calculation here. I'm just going to use the add columns. I could also do that in the summarize function, but let's just try to create that using add columns. So I'm just going to go to add columns. 
And in the add columns, I'm saying, hey, hey, here is my table, which is this particular table, two columns. And in this particular table, I want to create another column. The name of the column that I'd like to create is, let's say, the count of unique products. And the formula to do the calculation in that particular column is nothing but the distinct count. Now, if I just write the distinct count of the sales table and the product key column, and I close the bracket, the context transition is not going to happen. Let's just take a look at the error and hopefully you'll understand it better. So I just go to the home tab and run this particular query and you will see that against every single quarter, I get 158, 158, 158. It's simple terms. What this is not able to do is this is not able to carry this filter, which is quarter three filter and 2001 filter apply it to the data only take a look at that particular quarter that particular year and give me the count there's nothing complicated here all that i want to do is wrap this around in the calculate function and this will function absolutely fine let's just format this dax and take a take a look at the result once again so let's just zoom this out a bit and let's just run this query once again and now we can see that we have the correct answer which actually matches this answer which is 25 25 and all of these values right here if you do not understand what context transition is, I will link uh, a few videos that I have done in the past and you will hopefully understand what context transition is, how does it work and things like that. Anyways, let's just proceed. Now that we have this particular uh, table here, which is where I get year, I get a quarter and the unique products. All that I would like to do is feed this table in my DAX right here and then sum these particular values. Now remember that this table was a table that I created using a visual and unique products was nothing but a distinct count calculation. But this is the table that I'm actually creating using this add column and summarize function. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to kind of run an iterator function and tell Power BI that, hey, Power BI, here is a table that I have created for you, which is where I have the year, I have the quarter calculation and I have the unique products calculation. And whenever you reach the total level, I want you to sum these two values, this value and this value. And these two values are kept where? In the unique products column, which is what we have already created. Now, the add columns and all of this DAX that we have written returns us a table. It's not really giving us a measure. So how do we actually work with this? I'm just actually gonna take this particular table, press Control C to copy this table, uh, come back to Power BI and start to revise my calculation right here. So I'm just gonna say that the unique uh, product sold is not going to be a straightforward distinct count. It's actually going to be this particular uh, calculation right here. Now this actually, if I confirm this formula, it's going to give me an error because it actually delivers you a table and you can't really feed a entire table in this particular cell. So what do I do? I actually wrap this around in the sumx function. The sumx function first part is a table. What table are you trying to iterate through? And this entire formula does deliver me a table, so that fits in well. And I'm going to say that in this particular uh, table, which is of three columns, I have a column called unique products, and that is what you're supposed to sum. So I'm just going to write the unique products right here, close that bracket, and let's just kind of format this a bit. All right, we're good to go. And I confirm the formula, press enter. Let's just take a look at what is, what is the result that we get. If I now take a look at the answer right here, I do get 50 and I do get 112. So what we did was we actually created a table, fed that at the total level to Power BI. And once Power BI reached at this particular context, which is the context of 2012, it first summarized the data, created that little table that we had it, calculated the value for every single quarter once again, and then iterated it through that and found out the sum of all the four visible values, which is also what you can take a look at right here. All right, that was all about summing visible values uh, in a table or a matrix visualization. You can follow the same pattern of creating some small summary tables and then iterating it through to sum through the visible values which you can see in the table or a matrix visualizations. If you have any questions around this, please feel free to put down a comment and I will be glad to reply. In the end, a quick shout about my DAX and my Power Query courses. In case you're starting out with Power BI and you find DAX hard or Power Query hard, you want to learn the fundamentals first and then you want to proceed on to solving more complicated, more challenging problems. I will highly recommend that you take a look at my courses. It's going to be highly beneficial. Thanks so much for watching this and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Cheers. Bye.